the training that I've been doing comes down to this one day. To be pushed to my ultimate limits. Not too many people have done it, and to be amongst those people would be a great honour. So I will try to do my absolute best and give it all I've got. One more, man. One more. It's the last yeah, one. You can do this, all right? You can do this. This is all the training, mate. This is what you come down. This one fight here. Last one, mate. Last one. Go it strong. Do everything you suck have. it up, soldier. Get everything you have. Everything you have. Everything you got. Everything. Now you want this, right? This is what you came all the way over here for. Okay, Let's do this. Oh, Judd Reed, the WKO World Heavyweight Champion, was invited in 2011 to attempt the 100-man fight, also known as the 100-man Kumite. When Judd accepted the challenge, I saw the opportunity to film his incredible life journey in martial arts, and specifically his preparation and training to fight 100 black belts. As an instructor here at the WKO headquarters here in Thailand, we emphasize a lot on trying to push the students as much as we can. As a teacher, it's probably the most rewarding thing is to see your, someone that you're training uh, developing, growing stronger. We train to help perfect our way of life, to teach, to pass on knowledge. I want to go around from here, and I just line the heel. A lot, a lot of martial arts, in my opinion, don't want to evolve, so they don't step out of their comfort zones. Whereas um, my principle is, you, you, you get out there and, and you do that. Chad's been here now for five years. Kids love him, the students love him, you know, he's like part of the family. Probably one of the very few martial artists that actually back up what he says, you know, he follows the, the path of Budo pretty much to the, to the limit. If you see the person's hand is like this, this is going to be a little bit difficult to kick someone in the head. But if you see someone's hand in like that, like some people fight like that, the hand is here, this side, everything's open up. Yeah? Uh, we have many people from around the world who come here and train here at our school at different times of the year. At the moment we have a young fellow called Jordan from uh, the Extreme Gym in Melbourne and the young kid is uh, fantastic. Judd is considered one of the toughest stand-up fighters in the world and often professional fighters come and spend a month or more training under him and the other teachers at the gym to condition themselves for upcoming fights. The first 20, 20 years, uh, I just did Kyokushin Karate. In the last 10 years, I've been doing boxing, grappling, wrestling, some judo. Coming like that, that's what I want. So I've got to do a big rip. So he knows another big one's coming. From here, as the defense comes in, he goes up. Someone asked me, what am I teaching? I'm teaching you as a, uh, to fight. I'm teaching you martial arts. There's only one way to throw a punch, and that's the way it works. Regardless of whether it was taught in Kyokushin, John Kempo, boxing, or Muay Thai. If he's hurt, okay, you go to the go, go, go. Boom, boom, boom. There are a number of other world-class trainers at the WKO gym. Nick Carr is a Muay Thai kickboxing champion, famous for his powerful combinations and also gifted as a trainer. 
you'll see sometimes there's four or five of us in the ring there, or even six maybe sometimes. But we always manage to work out, work around to beat each other and not get in each other's way. And it works really, really well. From experience, yeah. From experience, and we know where to stay in our own corner. And it's a really good atmosphere, a good aura in, 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 the, in the gym and so in the ring. Yeah, you cover everything. Cover everything. Boxing, kickboxing, tie boxing. Between both of, both of us, we got everything covered. We got everything. Here we try to think outside the circle and we always welcome different styles to come to our dojo. And we even ask them to take the class. Tonight, uh, Chris Brown from Australia has taken the class. He's a five-time Australian Olympian and he's absolutely amazing. Where's his head going when I go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good. His body can't go anywhere. Oh, oh, and all I do is straight forward. Well, firstly, I'm Judd's friend. Foremost, I've, I've known Joe a long time. When we do cross train and, and it gets to that stage when we're, I'm trying to show him stuff that's going to help him with his karate and, and, and to stay on his feet uh, as, as long as possible. See how my hand's sliding in there? Yeah. Because it's going exactly oh, where. No, no, leave it back where you had it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back, go back. And that other thing. Yes. Because yeah. right now, if you let that go, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do exactly what I've been showing you. Yeah. He's going to walk into something if he keeps doing this. His hands are down too low to fight a fight. There it is there. Toby Marsh again. Pakistan boy is down. Well, he was always to totally obsessed by any sport. Played footy, golf, tennis, everything. And then got introduced to karate just by chance, I think, and that was that was it. When he first started, he was small. Small, small, up until about 15, and then he started to get beef out a little bit. The teenage years were obsessed by karate. There was never a problem of where where's my son at 16 or 17, ever. Never. <laughs> Judd Reed lives and breathes karate. Hit to the head. What started out for the young 17-year-old as a part-time hobby four years ago has turned into an obsession. That obsession has given him a chance of a lifetime, becoming the first Australian to be accepted into the world's most prestigious karate school in Japan, the Hombu Dojo. Oh, I can't wait till next three years in Japan. It's my one goal in life and hopefully it will become fulfilled, yeah. Masoyama was a martial arts legend, revered as having almost mythical powers. He pioneered and was the first man to complete the 100-man kumite in the 1950s. And by 1990, when Judd arrived in Japan, he had over 12 million students worldwide. To train under him was every karate kid's dream, and he had hundreds applying each year to become one of his uchideshi, or live-in students. It's basically a thousand days living in student course. Of, of, a, of, you know, dedicating your life to um, Kyokushin Karate. And um, we were the direct um, students of um, Masoyama, who uh, founded the Kyokushin uh, uh, Karate style. So we were living in, in a small um, dormitory right behind the actual headquarters for, for Kyokushin. As Uchideshi, we were fortunate enough to have a special class with Sosai once a week, which was just for the Uchideshi. No one else was allowed in there. Yeah. So we were very privileged uh, in that sense to be taught directly from the source. Mm. Judd ended up being the first foreigner ever to graduate uh, as a Nuchideshi, and I graduated one year after as Solsai's, what they say, the last Nuchideshi, because a month after I finished the Nuchideshi, he passed away, so we we're kind of part of the end, part of the beginning, part of the end, yeah. Solsai was basically like a living legend, and us being that close connected to him, being his personal students, we got special treatment from Solsai always. There's a huge gap when he passed away, like an empty void that never really could be ful fulfilled again, you know. It's, and he said that, well, if everyone did karate all over the world, there'd be no wars. There would be no wars because they could just biff it out of the dojo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Ladies and gentlemen, a new world comité champion. And so should we have a counter? And the winner goes to Judd Reed. Look at his face. Last year I fought in the 2010 World Comité Tournament. I felt very strong and fortunately and all that my hard training paid off and, and I won the tournament and, and now a year later I still have a, a lot of fire in my, my belly and see if you suggested a while back of uh, why don't you give the 100 man kumite a try. It's an ultimate challenge of your spirit really. 
because I mean it doesn't matter how fit you are you, it's it's still is gonna it's still gonna come down to how skillful uh, a fighter you are and how many um, tricks you got up your sleeve you know to be able to control your opponents in, for that long time and we're talking three hours of fighting here it's I, I don't think I can do it it's, it's too hard I said I'm almost well I am now 40 years of age and then some of my closest friends said to me Chad why don't you do it you can do it you're strong you can do it I got that idea in my head that everyone's very supportive. That's when I got in my head, okay, now time to train hard. The 100 Man Committee is a very intimate affair, usually held in, in a dojo, and is attended by 100 fighters, uh, 100 spectators, and maybe uh, 50 judges and officials. Judd will be the first Australian to complete the 100 Man Committee if, if he gets through it. blood and sweat and tears as they say this is where it's all done is, 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 is preparation for the 100 man contact and on the day hopefully everything goes good strong efficient and um, just give it my best shot just physically super strong i've never there's not another person like i've trained the best believe me some of the best in the world K1 guys, MMA guys, the best. Judd's physical strength is far superior than anyone I've ever seen. Being here all the time, being a addition, I, I, I can take it. I know that, oh yeah, I know that feeling, I know that feeling, it's okay. Because on the day on the 100 man committee, I'm going to be out of my cookie so Many, many times. Ah, push! This is all power training. All conditioning stuff, as you can see. Push you to your max, you stick on my back, just climb up. You know, someone's your back and just get to your feet at all cost. As we get fitter and closer to the tournament, we shut the recovery down. So we shorten the recovery time. He has to recover within 10, 15 seconds every two, every one and a half minutes because that's all they'll get when they go us, oh, wait for the next guy to come on, he's only got probably 10 seconds. It's like, it's like training high altitude training. You're pushing your lungs to the maximum. Same as this heat, you're pushing yourself to the maximum. You're sweating constantly, so your body's working at a higher, higher rate than normal. Pat, Sam, now when you guys cheer me on, it's fantastic. I suppose you're you too. Thing, you got to learn to accept pain. If you don't accept pain, then you're no good for you, no good in fruition. You got to ignore pain. That's part of the mind. Never back from an opponent. And never fear from pain. I saw Master uh, Kira, and I was part of it also. I fought him two times during this 100 man kumite. Fight number nine, where he's very, very strong. And fight number 67, I think it was. Um, by the time it came to 67, he was he was he was he was very fatigued, and he was. But he showed a tr tremendous amount of spirit. He never he never gave up. He never lied down. But he was actually a punching bag for the last 40 rounds. He just kept on fighting and fighting, and I think he, he lost awareness of where he was. And he started biting people to do something like that. His survival was to fight on, persevere. He used everything he had. He lost power in his punches, lost power in his kicks. What's next? Get close to him, I'll bite him, I'll fight him, I'll bite him. So I think, I think when, you, when you see that, when I saw that, everyone was really blown away. This show, his determination. I mean, you could see in his eye that he was he's absolutely exhausted. But he never stopped. He kept on going and going and going. Boom, yes. Up, 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 up. Boom, Boom. Yeah. 
anyone who has trained with Sifu McGuinness knows that there are no easy classes. Sifu had, had told me from, from day one that when I was about to do the 100-man Kumite that I was going to be pushed beyond any boundaries, that the training was going to be so intense that I, there might be times where I might quit. This Komate is WKO, Komate World Komate Organization. It's, you're not fighting the peers. You're fighting the top guys from every dojo in Japan that's part of the World Komate Organization. And some of the toughest fighters in the world are in the WKO. So they're all going to be sitting there to take Judd's head off. If anybody's going to last, it's going to be that guy. His, his mind is just so strong. You know, his body's just incredible in the sense of how much you can take as a human being. Go! Come on guys, pick it up! Go, 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 go! Come on! Faster, Jordan! Judd, pick it up! Catch him! Go, 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 go! All right, time! Good work, guys, good work! Go! Come on! If you do the same thing over and over and over again, your body gets used to it, your muscles get used to it, and therefore, you've got to shock your body. If you're in a fight, the fight doesn't go according to plan and all those, does it? Like, you're not going to, you're going to kick me here, they're not going to move here, they're going to throw this punch, no, it's just, it's a good adapt, so therefore, your muscles are going to get shocked if you kick somewhere where you're not get used to it, and just got to be conditioned in every single way to have an answer for everything. Have an answer, train, train everything, and then therefore, nothing's a surprise. It's all teamwork. Mm. He's in there, we're all in there, mate. Good work, guys. Good work. Good start. <laughs> Up until now, until the 100 uh, man commentary, I just like to do weights just once a week. Mainly just try and focus on power training, like getting uh, squats, uh, heavy dumbbell presses. All the ones I've been to is one, so that's that's not that's been wonderful. But you can't help it as a parent to, and it's physical and it's full on physical. Here in training with the Thai military police here in Bangkok. These soldiers are training to become military police. The base is surrounded by high walls and gun towers, and the fact they let us film showed just how much respect the military had for Judd and Sifu McGuinness. <laughs> As a kid growing up in martial arts, I never thought I would see myself at the age of 40 living in Thailand, training with and teaching the, the Thai military police. I couldn't see myself doing that, but I guess through the whole of the years of training, this is, this is where it's led me to today, you know, and through the avenues of martial arts, that gives you that, that, that opportunity and to, to break out and to teach different, uh, to do different things like this. <laughs> uh, nip, nip. Get it? My ear. 
ลูกปืนจะออกจะตกใจจะยิ่งผมตกอาผมปักปิงนะสั้นๆแบบนี้เทนี้ล็อกนะผมล็อกเชนเบอร์ทำบาเลเตอร์ไม่ได้ครับนี่ถ้าจีจากนี้เป็นอาชีพคุณทำอะไรไม่ได้คุณต้องใช้โอกาสไปมันมีจีบอกเฮ้ยไอ้อาตัวแม่ตัวแม่เว้นไปไปกูยศ Yes, this is. If you want, you kick the legs too. <laughs> so, uh, see if he's throwing any leg kicks now. There you go. Before the fight, there was a black belt grading. I've got to say, I've never seen anything so hard. The students graded for three days, and on the last day, they had to run 25 kilometers. The first five kilometers of that through the ocean, and that was just the morning session. Yesterday, when you did, you did two hours of fighting, you were getting all those side kicks. Now look at you, like a machine. Great effort, mate. Keep it up. Keep it up. We had a black belt grading, and it went for two days. And after watching the black belt grading and what they went through, it was uh, pretty impressive stuff. So much conditioning as well. The grading went for on the last day for eight hours non-stop, and uh, one guy almost got rushed to hospital, almost actually died. And he actually managed to come back from the hospital. And he came good, and he kept going. And actually, at the end, he was probably he was one of the best in doing a, in grappling, which we grappled for 30 minutes non-stop. But everyone was in shock. That really, you know, that was inspirational stuff to see things like that. If this old man could do it, a 48-year-old man, then I've got no excuse, so to, so to speak. So I'll, I'll take that to the 100-man committee with me, and I think about things like that, and. and Maybe during the, uh, during the, during the uh, 100 men come down, I'll, I'll be in a similar situation, and I hope that I'll be able to uh, do what he did as well, soldier on through. The 100 man fight is to be held in the Osaka Prefectural Gymnasium, the same stadium where the sumo is held once a year. Not in the main arena, which seats thousands, but in the dojo underneath, more in line with the intimate nature of such a rare and traditional event. I am the head of the Biakuren Kaikan. 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 やはりそれなりの技術と精神力を持たないと100年組手は達成できないと思います100年組手を貫通するというまあ一つは男のそのロマンというか空手をやってる限りはそれを達成したいという気持ちがやはり強いものだと思いますので相手があっての100人ですから相手がどういう攻撃をしてくるかによって非常に精神的に疲れると思うんですねですから、えー、肉体面、まあ、スタミナも含めて肉体面そしてそのハートの部分これがいかに邪道邪道師範がですね百人組手をやるためのそういうあの気構えでいるかこれがまず一番大事なところでしょうねそうですねやはりこれ百人組手を達成すればですね人生何でもでもきるんじゃないかと、えーまあ、ジャドも心配ですし当たる相手の選手も心配ですし、まあ、あの一番問題は怪我のないように。So all I can do is just、uh, try and stay focused and give it all I got.
First 50 fights was awesome because there was lots of activity, lots of uh, real good fighting going on and, and Judd was doing really, really well and kind of throwing people down and <laughs> doing what he was there for. Keep a distance. So you don't lose all the energy. Yeah. Right? yeah. Especially if you're these smaller. Right? I previously worked with Judd on other tournaments where we, we do give treatment to the fighters between bouts. But in this particular rule system, there isn't a provision for the doctor interceding between bouts. And therefore all the doctor will be able to do is just get him some care as soon as the fight's finished. Keep doing what you're doing, mate. Yes, yeah. you're fighting magnificent. Yeah. You've done all the hard work and you're just going to finish off. It really came to, to fight number 50, uh, which was the halfway point, and he came over and, and we all agreed. We all, we all looked at him and we said, wow, he's going to do this easily. Bit tense there. Yeah. Just keep your distance right. He started to get worn down. Uh, from, from 50 fights through to 70 fights, uh, he started copping some blows. Make the right choice. Make the right choice. I got them! I'm not gonna get any easier from now on. You know that. I just goes a big punch, right? 
Don't let him punch you. It's gonna hurt. All right. Don't let him hurt you. I don't know what to do. Make the right choice here. Just get, if you're not going to punch, get out of punching range, yeah? I use your angle, you've been doing that well at Casey. Get the distance right. That's it. Got to fight number 80, uh, and we noticed at that stage that Judd wasn't using his legs anymore. He was really hurting at this stage, really hurting and starting to waver a little bit. No, so don't, don't kick, just protect yourself, move properly, and do what you can, and you can punch, alright? You understand me? Yeah. And we got my 15, 4, 5 to go. Yeah. It's nothing, it's nothing. Alright, you can do this. That stage there, I'd have to say, was probably the point where, where I was most worried. I thought, you know, he, he might not get through this. He looked like he was dizzy, and looked like he was going to fall down and stay down and once you do that in a contact that's it that there's the finish and, and I knew he would never forgive himself if he did that. Move, move out of there, Judd, out of there. Oh my god, you've just got to draw some strength from somewhere. You're the man, mate. You're the man, Doug. You're the man. Okay. Good on you, buddy. Oh, well, mate, just over ten fights to go. Okay. You can do this. Do you yeah. do this? Of course. There you go. There you go. Stick to that. Stick to that. Oh, don't chase him. He's gonna come. He stopped using his legs to kick uh, and had to rely on his hands. And what he did was he well, yeah, obviously used, used his skills to change the fights into more of a punching uh, contest. And, and obviously it built up to a crescendo. Everyone was just screaming and shouting uh, at the top of their lungs. No doubt they knew where he was. But I'm quite sure that he, he was uh, almost in a state of shock. He was, you know, mildly cast and totally exhausted. Man, you got one more, man. One more. It's the last yeah, one. You can do this, all right? Daddy. You can do this. Mate. Down, so hey, Daddy. Good on you, Jackie. This is all the training, mate. This is what we've just come down. This one fight here. Last one, mate. Last one. Go it strong. Do everything you everything have. Suck it up, soldier. Get everything you have. Everything you have. Everything you have. Everything. Now you want this, right? This is why you came all the way over here for. Okay, Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah.
he got through that last fight, people just, just relieved. It was amazing. Just, just amazed, amazed and relieved. It was, it was, it was I've never seen anything like it. And I don't think anyone else there uh, has either. They, they, we all had the same feeling at the end. We've just never seen someone take so much punishment and just keep coming back again and again and, and to get through that was just amazing. In Japanese, they say us no seishin, which means the perseverance of us is to demonstrate, keep fighting on. You've, you've done this incredible, amazing thing. After all these years of all, every, all your input into karate, you've, this is your peak and, and you've done, you've achieved. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life and that if it wasn't for my family and friends being there, there's no way I could have done it. <laughs> Judd always has been an extraordinary athlete and, and remains so, not just an athlete, but a, uh, everything that uh, karate is meant to symbolise. He's a gentleman um, and he's, he's a great leader. Uh, and of course this is just another milestone in proving himself, but uh, he didn't have to prove anything to me. I already knew that he had this sort of character and this sort of ability. Not many people are able to do what they absolutely love in their life for the whole of their life. So since he's was 10 till now he's 40 and you just think, how lucky are you to do every day, all day, something that you absolutely love with a, with a, a a passion that's, you know, yeah, unwavered. So, yeah, he's great. <laughs> yeah, everyone's been through this, all the fighters who've fought in tournaments, tournaments as well, they've all, all experienced this. And just a matter of just, uh, yeah, just be careful, take care of yourself, and try not to drink too many beers. <laughs> You know, to, to look at him, uh, when he came to the kids' tournament the next day, you'd never know he did this 100-man fight. Um, everyone in the stadium, and there were, there were easily 5,000 spectators that all heard about what Judd had done the day before, and they were amazed, uh, just as we were. But just the fact that he was, he was not in bed, just the fact that he wasn't chewing painkillers like candy and you know, his whole body was in an ice bath, um, that's what we expected. For completing the 100-man kumite, Judd received his fifth dan and was awarded the rank of Shihan, an honorific title in martial arts meaning master. Judd had completed the ultimate challenge in the twilight of his career. He'd taken on the impossible and won. And as Sugihara Kancho had said, if you can succeed in completing the 100 man kumite, you can succeed in anything in life. I was just one of, the, one of the most luckiest martial artists and I had the, the, one of the greatest opportunities in my life is to have been a, a new tradition of Sasoyama. When I did my 100 man kumite, I carried that spirit from all of my training that I had done here in Japan. I took that onto the mat with me in Osaka. The Sosai is, um, he says, as, as a, as a Kyongshin fighter, and as a martial artist, your, the biggest achievement would be to become a world champion and to, to do, fight a 100-man kumite. Now that I have uh, completed it and, and, and have, have done it, I think, I, I think he would be feel very proud. He'd be looking down saying, good job, good work. He'd be, I, I could just see him give me, give me that nod of, mm, well done, you did it. Dream is to, uh, Keep, keep training and keep teaching for the rest of my life. That, that, that's embedded into my blood. I will never stop doing that. <laughs>